Speaking of TV, last night was another episode of Bachelor in Paradise. It's time for the update. Hit it, Steve. Come join us on this beautiful journey as Ralph Garman and Petros Papadakis recap. It's the Bachelor in a Paradise. It's so nice, it's full of spice. It's the Bachelor in a Paradise. Ralph and Pete make the sacrifice. Come on and join in on the fun, because all these people are so dumb. So Ralph and Pete. What's the deal? Is there anybody you want to kill? The Bachelor in Paradise. All right, uh, Ralph is here. Check. And I believe Petros Papadakis is here on the phone. Hey, P, what's going on, buddy? Good morning, everybody. Good morning to you. Good morning, buddy. I'll tell you, last night they kicked it off the show properly, didn't they? When uh, they were sticking random items in Jack Stone's mouth. That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> hey, Stoney didn't like that very much. No, they would put it, they stuck an old crab in his mouth. What? Uh, they were some... playing a little game, Allie, where they would they would hand they would uh, blindfold Jack Stone. Okay. Attorney Jack Stone, he'll fight for you. Sure. And they were putting random things in his mouth to see if he could tell what they were sticking in his mouth. You I played was, that game, I I'm sure, at parties. I don't love this game. Uh, they were trying to get it in between the beautiful white rows of his pearly, perfect teeth. He does have some great teeth. Uh, you know, a little piece of papaya he had to okay. guess, and a little jalapeno. All right. And then, you know, Alexis thought it'd be funny to take an old, rotting, dead crab oh, from the beach and no. a little one and try to jam it in his mouth. And, and Jack bristled at that. Yeah. Why is this a thing that is happening on your TV? Because when you're on Paradise, I think there's a lot of downtime around no the TVs, old resort. No TVs, no cell phones. Yep, and you're just there in between dates and in between fights. You're just looking for ways to kill time, and sometimes you got to randomly jam Debris in Jack Stone's mouth. Okay. Dead, dead debris, dead flesh uh, carcass, not yeah. meant to be eaten. That all changed when Kristen showed up. She uh, added some spice. I like, her. I like Kristen a lot, P. I'm with you. I think she's lovely and she's uh, busty and she seems to have a nice uh, sense of humor about herself. Here's Kristen. My name is Kristen. I'm from Nick's season of The Bachelor. People will probably remember me as being a virgin, so. Still remains the same. I mean, is paradise even paradise without a virgin in it? Good point. <laughs> Great point. Um, she had a date card, and she decided she was going to go on a date with Matt. Now, Matt had a previous relationship with Jasmine. And Jasmine, for those of you who don't remember, was from a Nick season. Uh, she tried to choke him out. Remember, she was the one who liked to choke people. Oh. She's a little excitable. She's uh, mentally ill, P. I think that's what you meant to say. She's crazy. <laughs> She's a nutcase. She gets a little riled up, and she likes to physically wrestle with her men. Kristen asked Matt out. Jasmine did not care for that, and she decided to uh, express that to her. You know what? I should say something, right? Like, she's nuts. You want good TV, ABC? I'm about to give you good TV. Here we go. Oh, oh no. My. It is on. Calling out the network. Give me the call letters right now. They're That's, hundreds of years old. She, she broke the fourth wall. That's how upset she is, P. And it was such a letdown. It was settings so, rolled over in his grave right there. It was such a non confrontation when she finally uh, got to, in Kristen's face. Yeah, they didn't really want. They didn't really. It's like an NBA fight. Nobody really wanted to fight. Honestly, it's totally fine. It just made us from I know the conversation we had. It just seemed like you kind of knew, and to do that kind of seemed like it seemed a little like sneaky and slimy. No, there was just from what you said to me, and then it happening. So have fun. Do you enjoy your date? Whatever. Hope you guys fall in love. But do you? Just wanted to say, pass off. Oh, she dropped the do you on her. Mm. Mm. So they went on a date, and I think uh, Kristen and Matt hit it off pretty well. They were making out in the ocean and stuff. Yeah, I mean, look, she's a very pretty girl, and, you know, you like her bust, or her behind ain't bad either, Rob. Right? She's not bad you. coming or going. I, I agree, P. And where she got back after the date, and she and Matt had a pretty good time, she was afraid of how Jasmine would react, and I think she had a reason to be afraid. Here's Kristen talking about it. I had a fantastic time with Matt today on the date. I feel like I'm in a good spot to get Matt's rose, but I'm a little scared of Jazz. I don't want her to do the chokey on me. I don't want her to do the chokey oh, on me. no. Really? You should have worn a neck roll. No, nobody wants the chokey. <sighs> she's, a, she's a grown woman, Ralph? Uh, which one? The one who said just use the word chokey. I don't want to do the chokey. Yeah, I think that's her move. I think this Jasmine's move is the chokey. All right. And... You know, a lot of people are really into it. It's called auto-erotic asphyxiation. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it's not auto when you're doing it to someone else, Pete. <laughs> it's, it's auto when you do it to yourself and they find you hanging in the closet. But if someone else is choking you out, it's just called assault. 
You know, I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Yeah. I was corrected. And I think Kristen had a reason to be afraid of Jasmine because here was Jasmine's reaction to how she was really feeling about Kristen going out with Matt. Kristen is a little bitch. You can't trust people like that. Like, if we were on TV right now, I'd probably just, like, push her, punch her in the face a little bit. I'd punch her in the face a little oh, bit. Oh, man. Wow. If we weren't on TV. She's well, not... haven't you ever done that? Just giving somebody, like, a little fist to the face just to let them know your fist is hard and it's there and you could do it even harder if you wanted? Not no. so much, B. <laughs> no. no. Uh, like, hey, look at look what could happen. Look at that. Look at that right there. <laughs> no. Wow. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now Matt is in between Crazy Jasmine and Kristen the Virgin. He's stuck there in paradise between these two ladies. Who would you take? Kristen, in a heartbeat. But she's a virgin. The other one might choke you to death, but... <laughs> Not worth it. Not worth the crazy. Yeah. But uh, Matt takes the, well, the coward's way out, some would say. Here's what Matt decides to do. I'm glad I came here, and I'm glad I gave it a shot. I just think that uh, I'm ready to go home. Whoa. He quits. Oh. I respect that. He I respect runs, that. He runs like just, a coward. You can just give up on the game and say, send me home? Tap out. Of course. Wow. Uh, Danielle did it last week. You can just leave. You can just leave anytime you want. It's not It's not a sort of internment camp, Bean. It's just oh, a beach. I thought there was a fence with uh, it's barbed a, wire. It's just a resort. You know, you can get on a plane and go yeah. back home. Yeah. Oh, all right. That changes everything. So, you know, he saw that the women weren't treating each other with respect and falling into the stereotype of women going after each other over a man who's manipulated them both. And he said, you know what? This is not the way I want to portray myself and my family, and I'm just going to gracefully back out of this situation. I've done wrong. Well, that was dumb of him. He should have <laughs> given, the, given the rose to Kristen and sent Jasmine home because she's nuts. Yeah, sounds well, like it. Well, I felt bad for Kristen and Jasmine because they were depending on the rose ceremony for someone to give them a rose. Yeah. Now with one less guy to have a rose to give out, they're both in jeopardy. So Chris Harrison, as always did the right thing. He stepped in and mm -hmm. fixed the situation. What a prince. By bringing an additional man into the mix to, to replace the now gone Matt. And he brought in one of our all-time favorites. If you're not positive where your rose is coming from tonight, this is Daniel. The Canadian Eagle's landing. The Canadian Eagle, Daniel. Now, why yeah. do we remember him, Ralph? What because was his deal? Daniel was the one who would wear the Canadian flag Speedo, <laughs> and he would talk about he's an eagle, you don't want to be a pigeon. And he's funny. He's the best. <laughs> he pours maple syrup all over himself. And the ladies like him. Oh, the ladies uh -oh. love him because he's buff, and he's got he's got a giant maple leaf there on his Speedos, that, and it needs to be giant. Ralph, yes. did you like the other girls calling out uh, Kristen for having those dirty scallop fingers Sca and bullying her around at I, the bar? I did not like the bullying of scallop fingers. What does scallop fingers mean? Oh, you don't know about no scallop fingers? <laughs> What's happening? No, what does that mean? They said that the virgin Kristen popped out like a whole bag of scallops out of her purse when they were like all on some Escalade going to a party and was like eating her fingers with raw scallops and then touching everybody. And then she grabbed a scrimp, a shrimp, <laughs> and gave that girl a hug with the shrimp just dangling around in the back of her head while she was hugging her. And everybody's like, oh, my God, you know, she's got a shellfish thing. She just puts shellfish on everybody. Kristen yeah. does eat a lot of seafood with her fingers, and she has gotten the unfortunate nickname of scallop fingers. No around, wants that. Around, no around, wants around that. Around the beach. So poor Kristen now is being referred to by most people as scallop fingers, and I thought it was unfair. I thought that it is. was mean and unfair, but also she did grab grab that scrimp and start waving it around. <laughs> she did. It's one thing to, you know, hug somebody when you have a dry tortilla chip or a Frito <laughs> in your hand. Yeah. But when you have a greasy, like, wiggling-ass shrimp, a Mexican shrimp... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why do you say it like that, Why the shrimp got to be Mexican? I'm just saying, it's shot up with iodine. You know, they don't oh, have the regulations. It's, not, and it's food. fine. It does sound like salmonella is waiting Mexican to happen. Coke? It's got like 5,000 calories. Because yeah. it's real sugar. It's not that corn syrup It'll stuff. It'll kill you. It's the right. best. I feel like we got off on a tangent. We here. may have. So tonight is the uh, rose <laughs> ceremony. We'll see who sticks around. We'll see what influence Daniel's presence has on the beach. And, of course, part two of tonight's episode, Corinne. 
tells all. They're going to get oh, her there and they're going to oh. We'll get to finally. hear her version of the story of what happened between her and DeMario and why production was shut down. Now, that sounds like it would be worth uh, revisiting the BIP report tomorrow on the Kevin and Bean Show, yes? I, I'm free tomorrow if you would care to do that. I okay. can't speak for my partner, Mr. Pup. Well, Pete's coming in tomorrow. Pete, you're coming what? in to do a college uh, football preview for us tomorrow, right? Yeah, if I can, uh, I got a shipment of oysters coming in at the dock. <laughs> I'm going to eat them with my fingers, I'm man. I'm going to get it as well, and then I'm coming up with my finger, my oyster fingers. Me and scallop fingers will be waiting for you. Ooh, Thank you, Pete. oyster fingers. <laughs> Thank you, Ralph. This has been The Bachelor in Paradise Report. The Bachelor in Paradise.